Ratios. Right, a ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. And you can write a ratio in three different ways. You can write it as 5 to 7. You can write it as 5 to 7. Or you can write it as 5 to 7. All three of them are read the same way as 5 to 7. But they're just written in different ways. Okay, Read the same way, written in different ways. So let's look at this one. For every seven white keys on a piano board, there are five black keys. Write the ratio of black keys to white keys in all three ways. Let me get my pen here. One of the important things to do is to ask you black keys to white keys. So how many black keys are there? There are five black keys to how many white keys? Seven white keys. And so the other two ways that we could write it are 5 to 7 and 5 to 7. All right, now, what's this say down here? Write the ratio of black keys to all the keys in all three ways. Well, how many black keys are there again? There are five black keys, so we would write 5, 2, and how many keys are there in all? There are seven white keys and five black keys, so that would be 12 keys. So it'd be 5 to 12, 5 to 12, and 5 to 12. Okay, let's see what's mysteriously behind this green box. Write the ratio of white keys to black keys in all three ways. Now remember there were seven white keys and there were five black keys. So for writing the ratio of white to black, it would be 7 to 5, or 7 to 5, or 7 to 5. Those are the three ways that you can write it. What's this next one down here say? So exciting. Write the ratio of white keys to all keys. Well, once again, there are seven white keys. And there are 12 total keys because there's five black keys and seven white keys. That adds up to 12. So you write 7 to 12 and 7 to 12. Okay. Write a ratio in three ways comparing the first quantity to the second. That refers to these down here. A week has five school days and two weekend days. This is the first quantity. This is the second quantity. There are five school days to two weekend days. And we can write it as five to two, or we can write it as five to two. All right, about 21, there's the first one. There's the second one. About 21 out of 25 Texans live in an urban area. So you could write 21 out of 25, or you could write 21 to 25, or you could write 21 to 25. Okay, two ratios, two ratios that name the same number are equivalent ratios. Previously, you've learned to write equivalent fractions. You can find equivalent ratios by writing a ratio as a fraction and then finding an equivalent fraction. Remember, an equivalent fraction is whenever you have 1 over 2 and you multiply both of them by 2 and you get 2 over 4. Or you can have 3 over 7 and multiply everything by 4 and you get 12 over 28. That means that 12 over 28 and 3 over 7 are equivalent fractions. And that means that 2 over 4 and 1 over 2 are equivalent fractions. Okay. So find a ratio equivalent to 4 over 5. Well, the very easy, excuse me, the very easiest way to do it is to multiply everything by 2, and that gives us 8 over 10. Find one that's equivalent to 7 over 9. What do you want to multiply it by? Let's multiply it by 10. Whoops, excuse me, by 10 over 10 and we get 70 over 90. So you can multiply it by anything. It doesn't matter. 
find an equivalent ratio for each ratio. All right, we've got 14 over 28. Well, 14 over 28 can be reduced. So not only can you multiply it by something, so sometimes you can divide it by something. So we can divide both of these by 2, divide by 2, and you get 7 over 14. Or you could have divided it by 14, and you would have gotten 1 over 2. See, there's several different things that you can do. All right, let's do the next one. 6 to 7. Well, this one's not written as a fraction, but you can do the same thing. Multiply both of them by 2. Okay, so we multiply both of them by 2. 6 times 2 is 12. 2. 2 times 7 is 14. Wonder what this last one's going to look like. Oh, it's got the colon. So once again, you can multiply everything by... This time we'll do it times 3. Times 3. So that will be 3, three times 4 is 12. 3 times 5 is... 15. See, 12 to 15 is the same as 4 to 5. 12 to 14 is the same as 6 to 7. Okay, write each ratio as a fraction in simplest form. We've got 4 feet to 8 feet. Okay, the measurements are the same, and that's very important. Okay, you've got to notice that the measurements are the same. Both of them are feet to feet. Okay, when those measurements are the same, all you've got to do in order to write an, uh, in the simplest form is divide both of them by 4 and you get 1 over 2. Now, whenever you write the ratio, you don't write the measurements in there, okay? All right, now let's do the next one. 10 seconds to 1 minute. It's very easy for you to do this. Come over here and go 10 to 1. But see, these are not the same measures, okay? So this is not right. It's 10 seconds to 60 seconds because there's 60 seconds in a minute. So this would be 10 over 60. In simplest form, that would be 1 over 6, okay? This last one is 30 milliliters to 2 liters, okay? So let's do this one. Let's go 30 milliliters to 2 liters. That would be 30 milliliters and how many milliliters are there in a liter? Okay, milli means a thousand. So there are a thousand in each liter. So that means there's two thousand, okay, milliliters. So that means our ratio is going to be 30 to 2,000. And that, let's see, we mark this zero out and mark this zero out. And that gives you a ratio of 3 to 200. Okay, now tell whether the ratios are equivalent or not, or not equivalent. Now, how do you do that? We've got 18 and 24, and we've got 3 and 4. Well, this is the way you do this. You put an equal sign, whoops, excuse me. Put an equal sign here in between, and you go 18 times 4, and you get 72. And 24 times 3, and you get 72. And that means that those are, because you got a true statement, 72 equals 72, that means that those are equivalent fractions, I mean equivalent ratios. Okay, what about 6 and 7 and 30 and 36? Okay, what I would do is I would go rewrite it as a fraction, 6 to 7 and 30 over 36. And I would go 7 times 30 gives me 210, and 6 times 36 gives me 216. That is not true. So these are not equivalent ratios. All right, your math class includes 15 girls and 10 boys. Two new students, a girl and a boy, join the class. Your friend says the ratio of girls to boys is the same as before. Explain your friend's error. Well, I'm sure that he thought because it was one to one when the new people came in, it was just one new girl and one new boy that things didn't change. But let's see. We've got 15 girls and 10 boys, so we would write 15 girls and 10 boys, okay? And then a new girl comes in, and we've got 16 girls, and a new boy comes in, and we've got 11. Now, to tell if those are the same, we go 10 times 16, and that gives us 160, and 15 times 11, and that gives us 165, 
So see, the ratio is not equivalent. Things are not the same as they were before.